So, uh, today we are going to talk about the uses of definite integral. How can you use it to do something effective for you? For example, finding areas or volumes of slightly uh, interesting figures like circles or spheres or cones. So, that is exactly what we are going to do today finding the area of a circle, finding the area volume of a sphere, and finding the volume of a cone of a given height. Now, I just want to tell you that the idea of a definite integral what we do today or idea of integration that integration by taking the integral of a function from a given two points A to B, I can actually essentially compute the area of underlying the curve and the x axis. This idea was actually known to Archimedes, one of the greatest scientists of antiquity. So, what he did was that he, he took the circle So, I am taking this uh, circle, what I, I want to find its area. So, what I am taking, I am taking some points say A, B, C, D, E, F and this is the center O. What I do is I join to the center O all these points. is like cutting up a cake and then you take join the adjacent points. Adjacent means from F I can go to A, but if I can directly cannot go to C, if I walk over the arc or walk over, walk over the circumference, if I move from F and go towards C, either I go through A and B or I go to E and D, I cannot. So, these so E, F and C are not adjacent or F and B are not adjacent while F and A are. So, what I do is now calculate the area of these triangles and then basically calculate the area of this polygon. So, we have now covered a good amount of area of the circle with these little parts left out, left out parts. So, the brilliant idea which Archimedes thought about was ok, I take the area of the circle, the area of this polygon and store it. Now, on the same circle now I increase my, I here had 6 points. Now, maybe I will make some 12 a 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. Now, I have 12 points and now I am trying to do the same operation. Let us see what happens. And then so what I've done, I've made the side of these polygons, the, the length of the side smaller and smaller. So now, if I take this new polygon and compute the area of the polygon, I have left out much lesser area than I had left out earlier. So you keep on increasing the number of points of the circumference which is called partitioning the circumference with points and then you try to find the areas of the hexagon as you move the areas go and increase and increase and increase and gradually go towards the area of the circle. So, Archimedes somehow had introduced the limiting process plus the idea of integration. For example, how do I now 
we are now talking about one thing, how do I use calculus to find the area of a circle and I will go back and use the very interesting book of Larry Gonick, the cartoon one of course and tell you how to do the stuff. So, you take a circle, say of radius r does not matter. So, you have taken a circle of radius r Now, once you have taken a circle of radius r, this is r, this is 0, this is r minus r. What I can do is I can take small circles of radius r i, say circle number 1, circle number 2. So, I am basically dividing up the original circle into pieces of thin circles, each, each having a radius which is delta r amount, a fixed amount more than the radius of the inner circle. So, if I have r 1, if I start with this smaller circle inside, the smallest one, if it is r 1, then the next one has a radius r 2 equal to r 1 plus delta r. So, similarly, I can have the circle with radius r i and radius r i plus delta r, this particular dotted region. So, basically it is consisting of this whole circle is consisting of some, stri some strips like that. If I can find the area of those strips and add it up, then I can essentially get the area of the circle. So, if I let us see what is the area of this part. That is interesting. Okay. So, what I do is I essentially I will take my delta r to be pretty small. So, the thins are so strip. So, there is hardly a difference between r i and delta r i. When r i and say so r i, so r i plus 1 is r i plus delta r i. So, this difference between r i plus 1 and r i is really small. So, what I can do is I can cut this particular strip here. And I, once I cut it, I can then now open it up like this. So, these are the thing radius r, but the length of this side, one of the sides, be very, very clear. The length of one side, I have cut it up, it is a very thin rectangle, is nothing but the circumference of a circle of radius r i. So, area of this is 2 pi r i into delta r i. Now, what I need to do so I what I need to do is now I have the area of this particular strip now I have to sum it up. So, I have to really sum this up from i equal to 1 to whatever slices you have made I did not really count the slice. But I have to take the limit of this as delta r i goes to 0. When delta r i becomes very, very small, so delta r i actually is representing the differential of r i's. Essentially, finally, the differential of the radius r, we can just instead of telling r, r i, we can just take r and r plus d r. So, this limit is is nothing but the integral. So, it is a you have taken the sums of the areas. So, you get an get an area, but what are you trying to do is you. So, you, you get an area, you take the individual strips and you get an area, but what you are trying to do is you know that here this area that you have computed there is a slight discrepancy because one side it is the radius value is the length of the circumference is 2 pi r i and the other side it is 2 pi r plus d r. So, you have to take into account of this difference and this actually which means that you have not completely 
got the area of the circle and so as you so there is overestimation or underestimation so as you make delta ri smaller that is dri this delta ri is very very small so this is when it, uh, as you make ri approach ri plus 1 then you actually get what you are doing then then this idea is correct so then that is exactly equal to the integral from 0 to r and then this is nothing but r square by 2 right pi r square 0 to r and this is pi r square. So, how do you find the volume now of a sphere? Now, you, are, you we have to understand one very important thing a sphere I will just show you is something like this. So, how do I look at a sphere? I basically want to cut the sphere into small here, here I cannot take slices like this. So, basically I want to I can cut the it is like a fruit and I can cut it slice it up into very thin pieces and basically then add the so called volume of the volume of those thin pieces and add them up. But if you take a very small thin strip and cut it out then you will realize that it is not really a part of a it this the volume of that element is not really a cylinder though it looks like a cylinder it is not because it look it, it looks as if it is a part of a truncated cone so because there is a difference between the radi the radius of one part one side of the strip and the other side of the strip but we can imagine them that the difference is so small that we can imagine them as cylinders so because we are imagining them imagining them as cylinders we cannot say that when we add up those cylinders the volume of the cylinders we get exactly the volume of the sphere so what happens is that we have to go to the limiting process of telling that the difference between the two radiuses because what you when you take a strip as we will just see uh, you there will be small difference that difference goes to 0 and then you will actually reach the actual area. So, this is the very basic limiting idea of Archimedes which we are still using now. Uh, you see what happens is what we are doing is the following basically here is a sphere. in three dimensions of radius r i want to find its volume so what i have done is that i am looking at one section of the sphere and what i am doing is that i am looking at a very thin strip cut out from it I am looking at the volume of this strip so this is your x i which corresponds to the first strip so you have the radius say r i and then r i plus delta r i this part if you go from the center of the sphere has radius r i and the remaining part has a distance of r i plus delta r i. Now, what do I have to really do? So, this is the most critical thing. So, this is your x i. So, the I really need to find the so, this looks like a thin cylinder though it really it is not a cylinder if you really slice up the sphere it is not a cylinder it is a truncated cone it is there is slight slanting on the two sides these sides are slanted you see you cannot say it is a cylinder but because we are assuming delta r to be small we assume that it is a cylinder basically we are thinking that we are putting up some cylinder then it should look like a sphere it would not only in the limiting case it would and that is the whole idea of the limiting case the charm actually. So, basically you have the radius r and then you have this x i here sorry this 
x i is here uh, the horizontal length. Now, what should be the vertical length which I will find by the Pythagoras theorem and that will give me the radius of this infinitesimal cylinder or, or elemental cylinder. So, this is nothing but root over r square minus x i square. Okay. So, now what is the area of this circle? The area of this circle is actually root over r square minus x i square whole square into pi and the volume of the cylinder is nothing but this little distance which is actually delta r i. Basically then we are having pi of r square minus x i square delta r i. So, the area, so what you do, so if you sum up all the cylinders, so basically x i is some point which is essentially lying in between these two, two ends of the cylinder or the elemental cylinder. So, it will r minus x i square delta r i. So, i is whatever number of cylinders you have pieced up the sphere into. Now, once you take the limit of this, so the volume of this elemental cylinder is this, when it, once you take the limit of this as delta r i goes to 0, that will give you the volume. And what is this? If you write this is nothing but 0 to r pi r square minus x square into. So, I will instead of writing del r i, I should write here del x i, because here I am looking at the change, here it was x i, here it was x i plus del x i. So, the, the actual change in the radius, whatever I am writing as r i here is actually not really r i. So, this part, so it is x i, this is my x i at this end and then this part at this end. So, this coordinate is so, this, this coordinate is x i plus delta x i and this coordinate is x i. So, I am taking as if the x i thing that this part. So, I am taking this x i thing and I am calculating the area of the cylinder. Of course, there is another way of taking an x i between uh, this slab and that also does not matter and then you can take this to be some delta x i. This, this length to be some delta x i, you can call this delta x i, does not matter, you can take any x. So, anyway, so I this is a this I should not write delta r i as make the symbol should, should be same and I should write r i here instead of x i. So, this is delta x i. Please uh, have a please check it up there, it is just I confuse usually with symbols. So, here so this is this and this will give you which you can compute out easily. Now, this is very interesting. Suppose you are asked to compute an integral of the form 0 to a root over a square minus x square d x. How will you do it? Because if you are doing it, if you look at this, what does this equation tells me? If this is a function, then it is So, this will give you y square plus x square is equal to a square. So, this is this function represents the upper part of the circle from minus a to plus a and area of this is pi a square by 2 and we are looking at half of that because of the symmetry. So, this is nothing but pi a square by 4, the answer is pi a square by 4. So, if you know the areas, you can actually compute out integrals like this. So, I will leave you as an exercise that without really integrating, find the area enclosed in the ellipse do not compute the integral by hand.
So, another important problem which I really want to talk about is if you take a cone, an ice cream cone which all of you uh, eat and so take an ice cream cone and basically a cone is a three dimensional object. So, take this x axis, this is a y axis and this is a z, so z axis. So, you take some sort of a line y is equal to a x or z equal to a x. So, you take this line z equal to a x, right. This is the so, it is z equal to, so it may be a, a y I should say. So, let me put this as y and this as x. And then you rotate this line along the z axis, keeping a fixed angle say theta. And what you generate finally is called cone, these are called solids of revolution. Because you are revolving some lower dimensional object and getting a higher dimensional object. So, this is a cone so, question is how do you compute compute its volume the answer is if this is my height so I give a fixed height to the cone this is my height h the answer is one third pi h cube by a square. Now, can you find this by calculus? Use definite integrals. There are many things about definite integrals we have not spoken about, but this this time is very short. It is essentially a tremendously tremendous crash course. So, again you call, cut it into cylinders and then take the limiting process. You know that this is really not a cylinder, it is slightly like a slanted thing, it is like a partially part of the cone, it is not really a cylinder. So, it is a truncated cone sort of thing. So, but then you really need to figure out what is the radius here, what is the radius here, find the area of the circle and then take multiply by this distance which is del z basically. So, you take z i and z i plus del del z i and then so del z i into what should be the so if you look at this radius this radius is nothing but this distance x i this radius is the distance x x x i at say at the ith uh, x i so z i here by so x i the radius is obviously coming from this equation x i equal to z i by a i. And once you know that, you know that what is the area? So, area is pi into z i by a i whole square for this elemental, this elemental circle, this particular, for this particular, for this elemental circle, you know the area is pi times z i by a i whole square. And that you really, you, you know that you have to multiply with del y. So, it is essentially this and that you have to integrate from 0 to h and that will immediately take you to this answer. No, it is not dy, sorry dz because it is delta z i, this distance is delta z i. This distance what I am now marking by pen, this distance is delta z i, so dz and that will exactly take you to this and that ends our discussion about definite integral. Thank you very much.